We do not want our freedom gradually, but we want to be free now. John Lewis was on the front line of nearly every civil rights campaign and confrontation in the 60s. There was something deep down within me, moving me. He's been bloodied, beaten unconscious, and to date, arrested 45 times. John Lewis volunteered to lead the first voting rights march in Selma, Alabama. We came to the edge of the bridge it will be detrimental to your safety to continue this march. Down below, we saw a sea of blue, Alabama State Troopers. You are ordered to disperse. They came toward us, beating us with nightsticks. I thought I was going to die. Since the Selma march, Lewis has been known as the conscience of Congress in the House of Representatives, a job he's been elected to 15 times. Okay. We're willing to be beaten for democracy, and you misuse democracy in the street. Dr. King called Reverend C.T. Vivian the greatest preacher that he'd ever heard. When unrest first erupted in Selma, C.T. Vivian's nonviolent beliefs were tested. You can't keep anyone in the United States from voting without hurting the rights of all other citizens. When he was attacked by County Sheriff Jim Clark, this disturbing footage on the Selma courthouse steps captured the attention of the nation. If we're wrong, why don't you arrest us? At 90 years old, Reverend Dr. C.T. Vivian remains a force. On July 21st, 2012, you could find him marching in Sanford, Florida to honor the life of Trayvon Martin. We needed to integrate the counters or to tell Nashville to do what it should have done a long time ago. Diane Nash made history when she bravely led a compelling silent march to City Hall and confronted the mayor of Nashville. I asked the mayor, first of all, Mayor West, do you feel that it's wrong to discriminate against a person solely on the basis of his race or color? The mayor answered that, in fact, he did think it was morally wrong. And I felt outraged along with them. 21 days later, Nashville would officially desegregate its lunch counters. She had made a name for herself in the male-dominated civil rights movement. Today, Students wait in line for standing room only crowds to hear Diane Nash speak. And I know of no other woman who has suffered more than she has for freedom. Those were the words of the late Ralph Abernathy about his wife, Juanita. Her husband's influence on civil rights is well documented. Known as Martin Luther King's best friend, the two were dubbed the movement's twins. During that period, women were more or less seen and not heard. We supported our husbands. However, you know we were giving our ideas and our organizational skills. In the early 60s, she sparked school desegregation in Atlanta when she enrolled her children into an all-white school. 46 years after she barged on Washington, Juanita Jones Abernathy returned to D.C this time to witness President Barack Obama's inauguration. We decided to take on the state of Alabama. Selma is just the first round. An ordained minister, Andrew Young, became close with both Dr. Martin Luther King and Reverend Ralph Abernathy. When he arrived in Birmingham in 1963, he said he wasn't sure he would make it out alive. Beaten and jailed, Andrew Young would take his nonviolent experience with him to Selma, Alabama in the spring of 1965. And I think you have to appreciate the beauty of this march uh, and also the power of democracy that, that change can come. Since then, Andrew Young has served as mayor of Atlanta, the United States congressman and ambassador to the United Nations. I think that it was extraordinary to be willing to die for something. After being arrested at a sit-in, Marion Wright Edelman says her eyes were open to how blacks were treated in the legal system. 
white lawyers didn't take black civil rights cases then, and all these poor people who couldn't afford a lawyer, and I was just shocked. Marion attended Yale Law School. Less than three years later, she became the first black woman to be admitted to the Mississippi Bar. Mississippi was just the place that was suited for what I wanted to do. People were sharecropping. They didn't have enough to eat. They lived in shacks. They had no rights, and fear was palpable. In 1973, Marion yes, Wright Edelman founded the Children's Defense Fund, which she continues yeah. to head up to this day. You knew that something was going to happen, and the logical person for it to happen to was Medgar. As the first ever Mississippi Field Secretary for the NAACP, war veteran Medgar Evers lived by a motto. We want uh, conditions improved for everybody. Evers' wife, Murley, worked by his side, holding voter registration drives. After a boycott of downtown Jackson businesses, Murley and her three young children witness what she calls the darkest hour of humanity. We heard him get out of the car and the car door slam. And in that same instance, we heard the loud gunfire. A white supremacist shot Medgar Evers in the back with a high-powered rifle. Medgar Evers' body was laid to rest at Arlington National Cemetery. In 2013, President Obama honored Murley by asking her to be the first woman to deliver the opening prayer at a presidential inauguration. I can just imagine that if there aren't some tangible gains made soon, there's really going to be hell to pay. In 1957, Julian Bond's family left the North and moved to the Deep South. I would go from the relative safety of where I was living to the relative terror of where I was about to move, to Georgia. Julian Bond enrolled at Morehouse College, taking the one and only class ever taught by Martin Luther King Jr., philosophy. Only six people in the class. I'm one of the six. After Julian Bond started and ran successful lunchroom sit-ins all across Atlanta, he became the first African American to be nominated for Vice President of the United States. We wish to offer a nomination with the greatest pleasure, the name of Julian Bond. Today, you can find Julian Bond teaching at American University. His favorite subject to teach, the history of civil rights. If you don't know where you come from, you won't know when somebody's taking you back. After Rosa Parks' arrest in 1955, Dr. Martin Luther King and Reverend Ralph Abernathy called on local preachers for help. Reverend Joseph Lowry answered that call. He was there on the Edmund Pettus Bridge on Bloody Sunday. The desire to vote was so, so overwhelming, so, so sacred, that we were willing to be beaten for it. In 2009, he was there on the steps of the Capitol to deliver the benediction at the inauguration of President Barack Obama. I may be poor, but I am somebody. Reverend Jesse Jackson was with Ralph Abernathy and Andrew Young at the Lorraine Motel the day Dr. King was assassinated. I cannot even allow hate to enter my heart at this time, for it was sickness, not meanness, that killed him. He started Operation Push in 1971, which is now known as the Rainbow Push Coalition, providing services for poor people of all races. For civil rights, Reverend Jesse Jackson has been called the living bridge between our past and the present. Angel food cake is white. Devil food cake is dark. Dick Gregory broke down color barriers by poking fun at politics, current events, and especially race. When they say this show features living color, you better believe it. <laughs> In 1964, Gregory turned the publishing world upside down. Today, Dick Gregory's autobiography has sold nearly seven million copies. In the name of civil and human rights, Dick Gregory has been arrested over 150 times and suffered through 60 hunger strikes. 
I believed that all people would love this music. The same year that thousands walked from Selma to Montgomery, Barry Gordy was in Detroit, also tearing down racial barriers. President of the Motown Record Corporation, Mr. Barry Gordy. The music of Motown became the soundtrack of the civil rights movement. No matter what the political context is, you can't stop music from coming in. In the 60s, Quincy Jones shattered racial barriers in Hollywood by being one of the few African-American men working behind the scenes scoring films. In 1967, Quincy Jones, along with Sidney Poitier, used their influence in Hollywood to confront the racism of the time. In the heat of the night. I remember in the song, we had the first line said, in the heat of the night, I feel a cold sweat creeping across my brow. And it, I don't know, it just seemed to set up the feeling of what that anxiety and everything was all about. Quincy Jones has a staggering 79 Grammy nominations, making him the most nominated person on the planet Earth. Raising funds for Dr. King because I believe in his non-violent philosophy. Sidney Poitier, he's been breaking through social barriers in film from the moment he set foot in Hollywood. He was Hollywood's first black leading man. I became interested in the civil rights struggle out of a necessity to survive. But even Sidney Poitier, the biggest movie star of his time, was not immune to the plight of civil rights. You ask me questions that fall continually within the negroness of my life. I am an awful lot of things, so I wish you would uh, pay me the respect due and not simply ask me about those things. Selma will give us all a chance to revisit those days and reflect on the changes they brought about. It will also give us a chance to reflect on where we want to go, especially in the wake of recent turmoil that has challenged much of the conventional wisdom about the state of race relations in America. We're always looking for ways to live our best lives, especially on a daily basis. With me today is dietitian and health fitness specialist, Rebecca Scritchfield, and we're discussing ways to sneak good for you habits into your daily routine.